Hello everyone, today on Scottish Memories we are chatting to Kay Adams. So how are you all? Hope you are all happy and healthy and safe out there wherever you are. Just before we get started, if you haven't already, just remember, please remember to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and leave a comment. But today we are chatting to Kay Adams. Kay is a television and radio presenter and journalist who you might recognise from things like Sunday Scoop, The Right Stuff, The Big Question, Celebrity Masterchef, The People vs. This Morning, and of course, Loose Women. Kay, hello, how are you? I'm very well indeed, thank you very much. When you read that long list, it just reminds me how, long, how old I am. But there you go, <laughs> I'm hanging on in there. <laughs> not, not in the slightest. It's, it's, thank you so much for joining. It genuinely means the world that, that you can spare the time to come on, because I know you're incredibly busy, so thank you so much. Well, I'm not as busy as I used to be. <laughs> but no, no, it's lovely to speak to you. It's, it's always good to have an excuse to talk about Scotland, isn't it? And you'd be surprised how, how much we loved, and all the people I've interviewed, how much we love to have a banter about our home country. It's, it's, it's heartwarming, truthfully. Yeah, there, there is just something that, that binds us, isn't there? You know, I've, got, I've even put my tartan shirt on. That was not thought out this morning. Um, I'm up very early in the morning for my radio show, so believe me, uh, there is no thought that goes into what I've uh, got on whatsoever. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely something that, that binds us, you know, whether or not, you know, you know, we're chatting in a bar in Scotland or, of course, I think we particularly love it, don't we, when we go abroad. And if, I've got to be careful what I say here. I, haven't, I don't want to annoy anyone. Uh, but people say, where are you from? You tend to get a really nice smile when you're, you say you're from Scotland. And I you think do. we really like that, don't we? We kind of go, ooh. <laughs> you know, you absolutely nice. do. You absolutely do. I mean, I, I lived in London for six years and... I don't. I think when I before I moved down, there was maybe something in the back of my head worried about being a, being uh, Scottish and living on my own and and living in England. And you know what? It was lovely. It was lovely. Like, and you're right. Whenever you go around the world, and mm. and you go, where are you from? Scotland. Like, oh, love Scotland. It's 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 lovely. It's a calling card, I think. Like like the Irish, to be honest. I think if you say you're Irish, you're always you know in with a shout then as well. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having to check because I, I, I don't know if you can see, but this is my wife's Scottish artist wall behind. Oh, and I right. noticed, I've noticed just before I came on uh, again that there's a Highland coup there. And if I go oh. just wrong, it looks like I've got oh, You've got horns behind. coming out of your head. So oh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just having to be careful. So just before so we get started. I'm on a satanic worship site, am I? And you just no, lured no, me you, in you, and you, chat about Scotland. You're fine. You're fine. I promise. Nothing like that, honestly. <laughs> just before we get started, how are you anyway? Are you happy and healthy and well? Are you good everything, with, uh, and everything okay? Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. I mean, you know, you'll have heard this from absolutely everybody. It's a challenging time, isn't it? Um, I've got my two kids are one's 14 next week, one's 18, first year at uni. Um, not easy. Uh, I think I feel it more for them more than me. To yeah. a certain extent, you get to this age and it's another year and, you know, a chance to watch Netflix or whatever. But I am very conscious for my kids that they don't want to be sitting in with mummy. They want to be out. Um, they want to be doing things, seeing their pals yeah. uh, and having a good time. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, um, when you see what's happening with other people, and that's my celestial being. Sorry, that's it's lovely. <laughs> well, that there's nothing apart from sinking that phone into a river. There's nothing that is going to stop that. So just think of it as celestial bells. It's lovely. Know. It was beautiful. It's it's weird. We're, we're um, kind of the slightly i'm glad everyone's well we're kind of in a very different situation because me and my wife have a 16 week old oh wow so it's a very you know it's a, it's a very opposite situation for us mm -hmm. because uh we got pregnant right at the beginning of last year um mm -hmm. and then as lockdown started we were about to tell the world that you know that or everyone that we were having a baby and then lockdown pregnancy mm -hmm. and now for 16 weeks of her life She's not met anyone. Yeah, it's yeah, it's really interesting. You know, depending on your situation, you will have particular challenges. I suppose, you know, from the outside, you might think, well, you've got a little bubble there and, you know, if you've got a little baby in the house, you can focus on that. But if I take myself back to that time, when I, my two were that age, I wanted to be out the house. That was just the way that I, I was walking like a mad person. Yeah. And you would meet a friend for a coffee and if you'd had a tough day with the baby, 
gorgeous as they are, you know, that coffee with a pal and just sort of sharing experiences transform the day in, in yeah. a really positive way. Um, and so I, I, I could see that there'll be bits of that that are really, really. Yeah, I mean, in some ways it's been it's been incredible God's friend because getting to spend I mean, how many dads get to help their the the mum through the pregnancy and yeah. through the first sixty weeks? Yeah. So that's been that's been a godsend. However, on the other side of that, her her grandparents have met her once. Oh, and they're oh, they're both so... they're both so close to us, but it's like we just can't, we just can't. Um, it's it's too risky. So there's is... ups and downs. Yeah. yeah, though I must say, when I am out in my daily trudge, as I, I call it, and if you see a little baby. Um, but it always kind of raises your spirits anyway, doesn't it? You're so wee baby for some reason, but um, also you think you will never remember this. You will yes. never remember this. And your mum and dad will tell you in years to come, you were born in the year of yeah. the 2020 pandemic and they'll go, what's that? I know, I know, you're <laughs> absolutely right. She's got no, all she, all she knows is mum and dad are here all the time. <laughs> That's Lovely. all she knows. So she's having a great time. Uh, right, we'll, we'll we'll jump right in. Really, so you're a if, correct me if I'm wrong. You're a Grange mouth lass. I am uh, born in Falkirk, so I'm a Falkirk bairn, um, but lived in Grange mouth. My dad was a very um, proud Portonian. That's a name from someone from Grange mouth. Um, so he I was did not know that. that. I was going yeah. Portonian, but I was going Portobello. <laughs> no, no, I was very much grown up with that. I brought up with that. Uh, so yeah, Dad was born in in Grange mouth. <laughs> I mean, Grange mouth obviously is best known for its refineries and it's an industrial town um, and you know not necessarily the most picturesque so when I was a kid I used to think that the refinery were the best Christmas fairy lights in the world bar none <laughs> I absolutely adored it uh, but my dad who's sadly no longer with us was so proud of Grangemouth um, he, he loved that town uh, loved the people he had such a an affection and a loyalty to it so um so I've maintained that as well. That's lovely. Though. There's nothing better than having a... Than, I mean, I have to say, when I was younger, I was itching to get away from Edinburgh and the things and explore a little bit, which is probably why I decided to go to college down south. And now I, there's, there's a warmth and pride that where you come from that I think only comes as you, as you get a little bit older and maybe once you've went away from it. So the fact that your dad held on to it so much and it's like, yeah. that's beautiful, that's lovely. Yeah, yeah, no, he, he did. And my mum came from um, a place called Limerick, uh, which is outside the huge metropolis of Slamanan, uh, which is outside the huge metropolis of Falkirk. So you get some idea of where we're going here. Um, and, and my dad always, you know, joked that he had taken her from the boondocks to the big city of Grangemouth. <laughs> <laughs> Go, come, come with me, last. Let me show you the world. <laughs> Let me show you the sights <laughs> of Charlotte Dundas and the Bowhouse Community Centre. So, what, what was Grangemouth like as an era to grow up in? Um, ach, well, you know, it's like it was great, but I, I imagine that for all kids, uh, your childhood home is about your pals, you know. Yeah. Um, and I had a brilliant bunch of pals, and it's a small town when you're that age you're not particularly worried about whether or not there's any great monuments or any beautiful architecture or anything else i had a fabulous park it's still a fabulous park zetland park um we all lived relatively close to each other we could walk or cycle to each other's houses we could cycle because the roads weren't that busy um and so you know i had a good sweet shop two or three in fact so what more do you want really yeah you yeah. know we it, all went it, to the same school more or less, certainly secondary school. Um, we lived near each other and uh, yeah, we got to roam, not quite free, but we had a lot of freedom. Um, and I would say those are the ingredients for a great childhood generally. You know, so I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. It's funny that maybe it's because of, I'm sure my questions tend to pull people in that sort of direction, but um, and the generation of people that I suppose that my generation and everyone that I'm chatting to, but you do feel a little bit like the the childhood that kids are having now, they're not getting that adventure side of it as much, that outside playing as much and 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 exploring. I mean, I could count, uh, I could go. My mom and dad are still in the same area of where I grew up. They still live in the same house. I could still go to all my old dens. 
I bet as a kid. You know, all the all these little bushes and, and things that you huddle over the place. Yeah, I bet you, I bet you it's still there and go and find it. It's, and it, all these things that you think it's a shame they're not getting that much nowadays. Yeah, it's, it's just, well, it's just a very different upbringing. Having said that, you know, they have opportunities that we didn't have. You know, they're probably more knowledgeable about the world. They're probably more knowledgeable about um, current affairs. Um, their friends are still hugely important to them. Yeah. They have different relationships and and they, I mean, they don't spend as much time like in the park on the cheese cutter. We would spend hours <laughs> on that blooming cheese cutter. I don't even know why we called it that, but it was a brutal piece of play equipment, I can tell you. Um, and that was what we did. So they're yeah. doing different things, but the essential part of that is being with your pals, isn't it? And, it and really having, is. You know, your own language, your own bits of connection and all the rest of it. And I think they are still, they are still doing that. But Just we did some mostly unsafe things, didn't we? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I can remember having competitions to see who could climb the furthest up a lamppost. Like yes. literally getting right up to the top. Is it, that, that was the game. Who can climb the highest? And then and I don't remember. Nobody talked about how you got down. <laughs> no, no. And I don't ever remember any parent coming out going, get down. Ever. And we were playing not far from where I grew up. And all these games that, that, that I hope they don't disappear, you know, like Kirby. And, and yeah. I mean, I loved Kirby as a kid. I and loved it. My favourite one is, um, so the swing park in my granny's uh, village where my mum grew up is Limerick and there's not a lot in Limerick. I don't think I'll offend anyone by saying that. It's basically a very classic Scottish situation that you come through pretty bleak countryside and then suddenly there starts um, a run of identical council houses facing each other on opposite sides of the road. That continues for half a mile, it stops and that was Limerick. That is basically what it is. Um, but there was a swing park. It's probably very different now, right now. There's a swing park at the top. And that's, you know, I spent a lot of the summer there. And we would have the swings. And in those days, of course, now we've got, what is it called? Tar not tarmac, um, tartan something. Anyway, it's a spongy surface, don't you, have under the swing? Yeah, 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 yeah. But then, you know, we had... Um, concrete. <laughs> concrete, either concrete or... Um, chips stone chips yeah and the competition would be to see if you could get the swing to go right over the top which was really difficult so usually what would happen is you get to about there and you go flying off and then your face <laughs> would hit the ground and the concrete go yeah yeah you'd have pebbles underneath your skin oh my god and you know that grazed look them were the days. But, uh, but we'd have uh, lawsuits now, wouldn't we? Yeah, we absolutely would. But there's something about that sort of pain. Like if you see someone on TV, like on a on a bike or on a, or anything, yeah. you see them fall along the ground, and that sort of scuffing their leg along the ground, mm. you still feel that. You know, you can still remember that pain. I can remember what that felt like, and it hurt. <laughs> I know. And under there. Yeah. You, you get the sort of the concrete chip bits under there. You go, oh, sure. <laughs> it's funny. My wife, like I said, we've we've got the little one now, and there's a park nearby us. And every now and again, every time we're out for a walk with the dogs, and and now with Lillian, and um, when she sees the park and all the parents in there, she's like, "There's your future. There's your future in the park <laughs> with the kids." And yesterday, when we were out for the walk, and uh, uh, my wife was talking about there was a parent swinging their kid and it was far. And then what you were saying popped into my head at the time about swinging right round. And I think nowadays I've seen them with parks where it's it's not a chain, it's a metal pole, which makes it a whole lot easier. Oh, right, okay, yeah, Because yeah. it stays up when you go right up. You're like, that must be terrifying. <laughs> but <laughs> when, you're a, when you're a kid, no fear. Oh, I know. I know, happy days. Eh? I know, it really is, it really is. So as you were growing up, holiday-wise, was it Scottish holidays? Was it let's let's explore Scotland? Well, to be honest, no, it wasn't. Um, my mother was the adventurous type, so we were kind of unusual um, in that we went to, for 12 years in a row, Mallorca. <laughs> we were very, uh, there was a reason kind of behind it. My, my brother had uh, chronic asthma as a child, really really bad um, and for some reason we discovered uh, that the heat the dry heat um, 
really made a, an enormous difference to him. So he struggled quite a lot of the year when, when he was young uh, with eczema as well. And uh, when we landed in Mallorca and we went to the same hotel, the same resort, the same cafes every year for 12 years, it was like a magic wand. Um, the seawater was incredible for his skin and the heat, something about the quality of the heat was just fantastic for his asthma. That's uh, amazing. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I don't know whether it was just him or, you know, I don't know if it's a recognised thing, but it was incredible. And right. so that was the main reason. We had a lovely time as well, but um, that was what took us there. Because otherwise, you know, we would go down to Blackness, which was not far um, from us in Grangemouth. And my mum would go and she'd get buckets of seawater um, to try and help his skin. Right. Uh, we would go to places like Burnt Island. I absolutely adored Burnt Island. I used, my mum and I used to go on a Sunday afternoon. We just, she'd say, Monkey. When my own kids were born, they thought my name was Monkey. Uh, because <laughs> mum would say all the time, Monkey, Monkey. <laughs> and she would say, Monkey, let's go to Burnt Island. Um, or somewhere at Fife was kind of, um, it's not exotic, but because we were in Grangemouth, so we were this side of the Forth, going the other side of the Forth, for some reason, going over the Kincardine Bridge, felt like we were going on a major road trip. Um, so places like Kouris, oh, I've got such a soft spot for Kouris, which is, I mean, if anyone is out there and not been to Scotland and you do get the opportunity to come, and you're in that part of the world. Kura is such a beautiful little village, so historic. I've never uh, heard of it. I've never heard of never it. You've never heard of it. Well, it's spelled Cull Ross. And sometimes people right. think C U L R O S S. It's been used as a film location on many occasions. It's absolutely beautiful. And all up there in Lime Kilns and Charleston and various places, really beautiful. So that was a favorite drive of ours. Loved going to Burn Island and the. The landscape over, you know, as you drive over to Fife, it depends what time of year you're going. Um, but it's kind of rolling hills. There's often a yeah. lot of kind of rapeseed. It's, it's really beautiful, a lot of parkland and things. Um, so we weren't necessarily going that far. But, you know, there was another place called the Milk Bar, the Pow Mill Milk Bar. That was another favourite of my mum and myself. And we go and we get this stonking big milkshake in the days that a milkshake was exotic. So we're, yeah. <laughs> this is how far back we're going. Um, and a piece of caramel shortcake, which we called millionaire shortcake then. Yeah, yeah. Not, not billionaire as it is now. <laughs> but it was that thick, you know, with the gooey stuff coming out of it. Yeah. Um, so it was that rather than, you know, going on caravan trips for two weeks in the summer. We didn't do an awful lot of that, but at the weekend, my mum and I would jump in the car and we just, we just loved just driving, just driving. That's brilliant. That, that, that we are, well, I suppose we are very lucky by the fact that we're not a big country yeah. by any means. It's, mm. it's really not difficult just to go, let's just jump in the car and, and go. Get somewhere nice. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I remember I was chatting to um, Ashley Gray, who uh, played Elphaba and Wicked, um just before Christmas I was interviewing her and she was saying that so many times she would just wake up and her parents were just everything ready right in the car come on off and they would just go somewhere every weekend just off somewhere else and that's brilliant we, we, and, and I think we're we're probably guilty of not exploring it enough to tell you the truth as a, as a nation to having all of that like you said beautiful views and hills on our doorstep and mm. almost take it for granted yeah, I have to say, probably I have seen the most of Scotland when I've been filming, you know, and, and so that's been great. I've had the opportunity to see a, a lot of, of Scotland that way, but I haven't actually holidayed in Scotland in, in the same kind of way. Um, but, you know, I've been up to Sky. We flew up to Sky. <laughs> Very funny story, actually. We, uh, in the days that television had money, they chartered this little plane to take us up to Sky. And... Uh, the pilot, very nice chap, we, up we went, and then we were to do a day's filming, he would wait for us, and then he would fly us back down to Glasgow. Um, but there's nowhere else to wait in Sky than the local hostelry. Um, and so when the pilot came to get us at seven o'clock in the evening, he'd had one or two, <laughs> or six or seven. <laughs> we got on this tiny wee plane. You know these planes, it's like a caravan yeah. with a set of wings sitting over the top of it it was not yeah. posh 
you know, when you get in and you shuggle along and let somebody else come in and then you close the door. Yeah. Um, and so we got back in and I said, well, I, I think he's had a wee libation, the pilot. And we're all kind of looking at each other. And he had, you know, that slightly over cheery grin that somebody- nice rosy had. cheeks. And yeah. the said, you're, you're right. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so um, that was a plane ride I will never, ever forget. We're flying along oh, and I'm bet. thinking, we're quite low. Yeah, we're quite low. And then I realized that I could see, I could read the registration plates on the cars. Oh, um, wow. Sure we should be this low. Um, and then I saw the sheep that were on the fields underneath started to go, whoosh, you know, started to part because obviously they were aware of this thing. And then the pilot realized that and he thought it was hilarious. <laughs> so he started buzzing the sheep so that he could make them go, whoosh. wow. It was a very long 40 minutes, I could tell Yeah, I'll you. bet, I'll bet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I have been, <laughs> yeah, the, the, I have been on a little plane like that. We were we uh, were fortunate enough to go to a friend's wedding over in uh, Jamaica. She got married in Jamaica, mm. so uh, we saved up and went over for the wedding. And the flight from, uh, I think it was um, Miami to Jamaica, if I remember correctly, it was one of those tiny little biplanes. It was just like yeah. propeller biplanes. And, and it's one of the it's one of the stories that you kind of think is an urban myth, but they did tell us because it wasn't full, the plane wasn't full, mm. and they made us all sit at the back of the plane because our luggage and the hold was at the front of the plane, and they said they needed wow. to balance the weight. And you're like, oh, I thought that was a joke. It's like really, <laughs> oh, oh. So I can't imagine what, like, if you can see the pilot and he's still got his hip flask there. <laughs> that must have That's been it. terrifying. <laughs> You kind of actually started to touch on my next question with with filming and things like that around about Scotland. There's so places where you've went and you go, oh, this is just lovely. Or if you find out you've got to go somewhere and do some work, you're like, oh, I love it when we go there. Oh, well, so many places. I'm, the thing about, if, you, if you're on a filming trip, it tends to be a whistle-stop tour. Yeah. Um, you know, you drive to the location, you do your stuff, you get back in the car, you drive to the next location. So you're not always 100% sure of where you're going or where you've been in terms of names and things. Yeah. Um, and I was fortunate enough, I mean, God, this is many, many years ago, but um, I presented a, a drive, it well, a motoring show, a car show um, called Wheel Nuts for Scottish television, uh, right. which is great. I'm a great, I love cars which now seems like a really bad thing to say, but it didn't seem like a bad thing to say 20 years ago. Now it's like, no, <laughs> um, but I did. And uh, so we did most of it, all of our filming, in fact, uh, all across Scotland. And so we covered an awful lot of miles then yeah. in beautiful cars or peculiar cars or whatever. Um, and, and that was magical. And when you're having to do so many driving shots up and down, you know, a particular yeah. stretch of road, and obviously you're choosing a stretch of road that looks picturesque in itself. So many times I remember, and I wish I could give people exact locations, that you would come round a bend and then you had to kind of stop and wait for the film crew. And you'd get around that bend and you just look and you think, my God, I mean, majestic. You yeah. know, that sort of take your breath away, you know, scenery. Um, yeah. And the frustrating thing is that I couldn't actually go back and say, well, that was there and that was there because there were just so many memories of feeling like that. Um, I mean, up the West Coast, of course, is very beautiful. You can't really go wrong, yeah. particularly, and indeed, up, well, everything that you get up above Glasgow, to be honest, you can't really go far wrong, but just so many moments of sitting at the top of a corner, the top of a hill, and taking that moment to pause and just thinking, you know, this is stunning. I mean, Glencoe is a kind of obvious one though, I have to say, driving yeah. through Glencoe, and it doesn't matter what the weather is, if it is, you know, blue skies and sunshine, it's magnificent. If there's a low, low mist and a drizzle, it's even more magnificent. It's kind of atmospheric. Yeah. Um, there's no weather pattern that can spoil Glencoe. I, I just think it's the most incredible stretch to go through. If you're, chat if you're sitting with a friend going through there and you're chat, chat, chatting away or the music's on, I always think you just kind of go a bit quiet. <laughs> you know, yeah. you think, wow, 
you know, it's, almost sort of feel the history coming at well, you a little exactly, bit. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you could be, it feels, I mean, okay, you've got telegraph poles and there'll be some sort of signs of modernity, but you feel that you could be a thousand years ago. Yeah. You know, um, sitting on a horse, probably, but there you go. But, yeah. you know, it, it yeah. just... About to get massacred. It's a lovely view. <laughs> With a saltar painted on your face. But, yeah. you know, it just sort of strips away time, which is an incredible feeling. It really I, I, I have to say that I do love... You're right, that sort of thing that... I, I love driving. I know, like you said, it's maybe not the most uh, mm. popular thing nowadays, but I do love just getting in the car and driving and that sort of sense of clearing your head. And driving, when you do get a chance to drive in Scotland, and you're right, you can go around a corner and just go, where did this come from? Yeah. And you can look at it and go, and it sometimes it genuinely does look like it's a painting. And it sounds cliche to say it, but you can sort of go, how is that not got a filter on it, to put it in the language of, of the yeah. youth of youth nowadays? It just looks unreal. Mm. There's there's a drive in Edinburgh that it's not even a drive, it's a silly little bit. And I, I fell in love with it years ago, and I always try to tell people about it if I get the opportunity. There, there's a, a road that goes round the top of Arthur's seat goes mm -hmm. up around Arthur's seat and as you get uh past the the wee lock at the top and you're starting to head back down it kind of drives through what can only imagine was carved out of the rock of Arthur's seat it goes through two rocks on either side but it just splits and as mm -hmm. it splits Edinburgh Castle just appears right in the center of the split it just appears wow. and you're like how and how did that like someone must have thought of that when they chiseled through and went but it's just okay that's a manufactured thing that's yeah and deliberately probably but it is a manufactured thing but th that moment of driving through scotland and just passing a corner or going around a, and just like that's amazing yeah and i, I guess you know our weather that we so often curse um you have to say that probably plays a great part in that because you know we get a lot of rain we get enough sunshine we get all the seasons etc so you know in terms of our landscape that that lushness and you know just overwhelming greenness that we get um really adds to all of that and it adds to the kind of wildness of it and as I say, like with Glencoe and the other parts of Scotland, even on an absolutely technically rubbish day, um, it, it just lends it an incredible atmosphere, which much as I love wall-to-wall -wall sunshine on my trips abroad, um, it doesn't have that same sense of, uh, oh, I don't know, that texture, if you like. Yeah, you know? No, I know exactly what you mean. And you're right, we, we, we kind of moan about the rain all the time, but if we didn't have it, it wouldn't be as green as it is. No, no. It's why we, it's why we have these spectacular colours because of the weather we have, and it, it's, yeah. again we take it for granted. When you're walking into horizontal rain with your head down, it's hard to hold on to these things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, you're. It's, it's very easy to be nostalgic and romantic sitting here it's talking so about it now, but when, when you're out, uh, when you're out uh, and the rain's actually bouncing off the ground and hitting you from below, it's like that's a different feeling completely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to ask you as well because obviously I've fallen in love with doing these interviews. I, I love chatting to people, and, and, and this is the first time I've, I've had the opportunity to chat to someone who does this as part of their, you know, part of their, their, their living, really, is their job. And keeping on the Scottish theme, is there people that you've interviewed that you've just always amazing, that you got really excited about and went, that's incredible that I've got to chat to them? Oh, I mean, too many times to, to tell you, to be honest, you know, yeah. or else I wouldn't have done it for this long. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's a question that I do often get asked, um, and there are clearly some sort of headline people, superstar -y type people that, that stick in your, your mind. You rarely get that close to them, to, to be honest. You know, it tends to be... It's a 10-minute conversation, isn't it? Yeah. And then that's it, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Michael Bublé, lovely guy. Linda Gray from Dallas was an incredible woman. Oprah, you know, phenomenal presence. So, um, yeah, that is a great privilege. But I have to say, and, and I, you know, I, I might sound a bit obsequious here, and I really don't mean to, because I do a radio program, you know, sort of every day or four days a week, certainly. Um, some of the best interviews will be with people 
who have just been placed in extraordinary situations or have had to face incredible adversity and have often dealt with it in the most humbling way. Now, not might not remember everybody's name in that instance, but they will be the interviews that I will walk away from and think, oh my God, that person is just incredible. I don't think that I could do that yeah. in, in their place. And, and those are always the ones that completely wow me. And it's not to take away from the talent of celebrities, you know, that they, they have worked very hard to get where they are. They are remarkable talents. It's great fun, et cetera. But to a certain extent, you know, there are people who have been blessed yeah. and they've made the best of those blessings, which is, which is wonderful. Um, but too many times I have met and interviewed people who have not been blessed, um, who have been struck down with, you know, great misfortune or great challenges and they have risen to them in the most remarkable way. And those are the interviews that I'm always struck by. I mean, in fact, I was just watching the other day, there's a woman called Corinne Hutton, for instance, Scottish woman, um, who I have interviewed on a number of occasions. Um, and it was something that popped up on my feed. Uh, Corinne, businesswoman, very successful businesswoman, mum. She was taken to hospital with a simple, well, started off a simple cold, went into pneumonia, taken to hospital, long story short. Um, she had to have all four limbs amputated because it had gone into sepsis. So, I mean, in the space of literally six weeks, she went from busy, never off the go, business person, mum, to somebody who was a quadruple amputee. Wow. And her response to that has been absolutely remarkable. Um, she's actually the first one in the world, I think, to have had a double hand transplant. Um, she is now learning to work with her new hands. Um, she is active. Again, she's, you know, doing an incredible amount of work to help other people in the same situation. You know, so she's back to that really driven, high achieving person. But with this incredible, I call that a challenge. I mean, <laughs> that's a hell of a challenge. Yeah. Now, those... Those are the people that I walk away from and think, boom, yeah. amazing. That's yeah. incredible. That's incredible. And, and there's it, so many it, people who continue to amaze me with their, their fortitude and, and their strength of, of spirit, you know? Yeah. I hadn't thought about it that way, to tell you the truth, because like, this is my little way, tiny little way of saying, all right, let's, let's, help Scottish tourism rebuild once it once it thinks this is the little thing that I can easily do at home that's that's enjoyable you know what I mean I've decided to help in a way that's enjoyable for me but then you're right you go out there and you see like say Captain Tom and uh the, 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 I wish I could remember his name there was a young kid on uh this morning who's camped out in his garden for almost a year to raise money for the the the, the neighbor that, that passed away and it's like that's that stories that are incredible and you're right i hadn't thought about it that way but that is yeah that, that's a, that's a, it's a privilege isn't it it really is to get to chat to these people yeah yeah it's a reminder every day of how fortunate um you know you are to be in that in that position yeah. uh, thank you thank you for that i didn't mean it to go that way but it was very nice of you to share that thank you so much oh no i mean and i always I, it's always what I say because it's genuinely what I feel. I'm always kind of wary that it looks as if I'm kind of virtue signaling, which is uh, the, the current kind of phrase, but it is genuinely what I feel, you know? No, no that, and that, that's, that, there's, um, that, 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 that kind of lost my words there a little bit, but you're right. It, that, that sharing genuine thoughts and emotions is always the best way to be. And I mean, mm -hmm. that is, you're right. All the, these people that can face adversaries like that in any way, and have the strength of will to carry on, to get a chance to chat to them and hear their story must be incredible, must be incredible. Yeah, it absolutely is. And then, you know, and, and much as you as the way that you're doing, it's not an interview, it is a conversation. Um, I think, I, I, I hope I learned very early on um, that, you know, to go into any interview with a list of questions, one to 10 or whatever, and not listen to people's answers and be able to respond naturally to those answers um, is never going to get you a great result. I mean, yeah. 
okay, you plan it out in your head, you've got an idea of what you want to talk about, you've got the broad territory, but um, you have to engage with people. And so often, uh, you know, something will come out that you hadn't anticipated that, as you say, takes you in another direction. And that's, you go with it, you know. Yeah. Um, I, well, God, a million years ago, I got a chance to present a debate show called Scottish Women, um, which, to be honest, was beyond my capability at the time. And uh, it was a large studio show with, it was supposed to be 100 women, but we only had 88 chairs, so that was a lie. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I used to plan and plan and plan, and I would have all these mind maps, and I'll go to this person, I'll go to that person, I'll go to this person. And it ended up, you know, I would be in the studio, and my head would be fried, I'm thinking was it the woman in row three seat four I was going to now or was it the woman in row two seat six or was I, I, you know I would lose the plot and then came out one day and thought Do you know what I'm just going to have to go where the conversation goes yeah. and it was a huge huge turning point for me actually in terms of learning your your craft if that's what it is uh, go where the conversation goes yeah. um and you know, if you've got a naturally inquiring brain, hopefully you're not going to go too far wrong. I think that's why I enjoy this. I'm like, I'd like I said to you before we got started, I've got four questions, and uh, but very rarely do I have to I just let the conversation go where it goes, and that's where the fun comes. Yeah. Although I am going to pull us back on topic a little bit right now. Um, obviously, as I was telling you before, I'm very fortunate. People watch the channel from all over the world, expats, um, people are planning a holiday, although I've been getting a lot of messages lately of I've rebooked for the third time. <laughs> I've rebooked, which, which is happening a lot right now, a lot of American messages, or people with Scottish heritage and things like that. If someone was going to come over for the first time, what would be your top tips? Um, well, in terms of cities, um, Edinburgh, I went to university in Edinburgh, so, and I lived in Edinburgh for quite a while. So, I mean, I've got a great fondness uh, for Edinburgh. Edinburgh is a world class city. There's just no question about it. And I'm not going to argue with you there. I'm biased, though. <laughs> we, we're maybe a bit um, you know, casual about it because we know it so well, but it's such a beautiful city. I mean, the, the architecture, the contrast between uh, the, the new town. Um, and, and the old town is very stark, but they they blend together beautifully with the Queen Street Gardens in the middle, but you get a very different experience on one um, or the other. As you say, you go up onto Arthur's seat, you get some incredible views. Uh, Edinburgh Castle from every single direction is a magnificent edifice, you know, yeah. from the grass market side, as well as from the printer street. I actually used to live in the grass market as a student. That's where I spent four right. years. Um, it was a very different place then, I can tell you, but I absolutely loved it. Um, our little flat actually had a wee sit out bit, a wee sit outery, um, which looked up onto the castle. So uh, we used to sit there every night during the festival and get the fireworks for free. It was absolutely marvelous. Up Victoria Street is one of my favourite, favourite walks in the world, round from the grass market, up Victoria Street. It's a beautiful street. It's a stunning street. Um, it's very Harry Potter-esque, actually. I mean, I've been yeah. lucky enough to go to, to Florida on a few occasions with my kids, and you go into Harry Potter land, etc. Um, if you want the real Harry Potter land, come to Edinburgh, because there's yeah. so much of the old town that you will think, oh, my goodness. So, wonderful city. But as a now Glaswegian, um, I think Glasgow is a fabulous city too. And personally, I think Edinburgh is a city to visit and Glasgow is a city to live in. Um, I think there's just something about the buzz of, of Glasgow. You maybe need a bit longer to settle into Glasgow. It's more about the patter. It's more yeah. about the way that people interact with each other and some of the exchanges that you can witness. But um, I, I absolutely love Glasgow just for that sense of quirkiness and unpredictability. I, I really love it. So the two cities, you know, for us in Scotland to have two cities like that, which are by train less than an hour apart, um, is just incredible because you've got two wonderful experiences that are very, very different. And I think for visitors to, to Scotland, both cities in their own right are fabulous. 
to have the to experience the contrast of the two of them is like even better um, yeah. so absolutely do that um, drive up the west coast drive up the east coast drive around the top you'll have an amazing time inverness beautiful city actually inverness i think much overlooked absolutely stunning yeah. um drive all over there you will just not stop going oh, oh you know so, <laughs> I'm a big fan of East Lothian, which again, I think it's kind of overlooked. I think it's yeah, it kind of gets forgot about a little bit, but it's got yeah, some beautiful but, things. For golfers, they, they well know it, but you don't have to be a golfer. North Berwick, places like that are absolutely um, gorgeous. The bit of Scotland that I don't know, and if I don't know if you do, but it would be on my list, is, is Galloway, Dumfrieshire and Galloway. Um, I'm, I, you're, I'm the same as you. It's not a place that I've had a chance to explore a lot. East Lothian, yeah, I've explored a lot because obviously yeah. it's right on my doorstep. It's right there. But no, no, I'm not as much that way either. Yeah, Wigton, Port Patrick, all down there, I, I believe is absolutely stunning, but um, yet to be explored by me. Um, but you can't go wrong, can you? No, you can't really. I mean, I, I couldn't agree more with a lot of things you said there, like, especially like the Edinburgh-Glasgow thing. I'm mm -hmm. one of these rare Edinburgh people that loves Glasgow. I think it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. uh, you're right. The person that Glasgow comes from is personality of, of, its, of its people. Mm -hmm. It's it's amazing. It is amazing. I, I think I said this to, to Gil Terrence Evans when I was chatting to her. Billy Connolly's got a line that he says when he arrives back in Glasgow. He just feels it seeping up through his feet. You know, he can feel it taking over him again and coming in. And there is a humour in, yeah. in Glasgow that Edinburgh just doesn't have. And you're right, Edinburgh's a spectacle. And the Harry Potter thing's absolutely, absolutely right. It's funny when you were talking there, I remembered a bit. I did a video ages ago about thing, Harry Potter things to see in Edinburgh. Mm. And I there's little things that you're right. You can wander about and go, oh, God, yeah, that's kind of that. That's kind of that. I had a moment where I went, Waverley train station... Princess Street Gardens used to be a loch and then Edinburgh Castle. And I was like, train station, loch, castle. I was like, that's the beginning of Harry Potter. Arrives at the train station, goes over the loch and gets to the castle. I'm like, that's that right yeah. there. But yeah, the other cities in Scotland totally get like um, Inverness, Dundee, um, Aberdeen. They're beautiful as well and, and, and they shouldn't be overlooked. Well, no, Dundee absolutely transformed, of course, with the, the VNA, which is, uh, you know, fabulous, fabulous uh, structure. Um, and, and Dundee have been, you know, really patient. They've taken a long time to redevelop Dundee. I think the city council there, um, you know, has invested a lot of money, but also played the long game. And it is now yeah. absolutely um, coming good for them. Um, again, a, a great atmosphere, feels a really kind of buzzy place. Um, lots of you know young students there who really invest in it. The games industry obviously huge in, in Dundee now, so um, it, it's got a real energy to it. And of course, the bridge across the Tay, the Silvery Tay, you get that on the right day when the the light is hitting it in the right way, and you're going to cross to Fife's and Andrews, etc. Is absolutely sunny. It is. It really. We're very. We're, we're just we're blessed in so many ways actually we really really are um i'm going to finish off with what i like to call difficult questions for us scots so oh, the, 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 this is where it, it really matters now so shortbread or tablet tablet oh straight in there no hesitation love the tablet love the tablet in fact if i go out for dinner when i used to do that and we have a cup of coffee at the end i remember it, going out for dinner furious <laughs> Sorry, I missed what you said. About, I missed what you said there because I spoke over you. Sorry. Oh, no, no, not at all. I so say if you go out for dinner in, in Scotland generally, you have coffee at the end of the meal. And quite often there's a little bit of tablet on the side of your saucer. That's your little yeah. kind of sweet treat. If I don't have it, I like, I'm never darkening your doors again. I'm not back. Oh, is that is that a, a, mm. a make or break situation there? Was that was that a granny thing? Was, so everyone sort of said it was a, it's definitely a granny making. Yeah, tablet no, thing. granny made tablet. Everyone made tablet. <laughs> I've said this to a couple of people. I've said this to a couple of people, but neither my mum or my wife's mum makes shortbread or tablet, and we've we've said to them both, "She needs a granny that makes shortbread or tablet. You need to learn." <laughs> <laughs> um, next up, Iron Brew or Whiskey? Neither. No, not a fan? No, no. My dad was a great whiskey man. He was very particular about it. No ice. He would freak out if somebody put ice in their whiskey. Only 
a little bit of uh, water. That was all that you're allowed to have in, in whiskey. Um, so on behalf of my dad, I'll say whiskey. <laughs> it's funny that I was chatting, who was it? I can't remember who I was chatting to now, but uh, oh, it was Boogie from uh, Fourth One, and he was he's not a fan of whiskey. And there's I'm only learning about it now, but there's something about it you almost feel traitorish in a little way if you don't like it. You're like you're almost scared to say, "Oh, I don't like whiskey." <laughs> I like a drambuie. Drambuie is nice. I like a drambuie. I tell you the truth though, I did, tell you the truth though, I'd, I'd like to sit with a wee Bailey's to be completely honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, square sausage or black pudding? I'm vegetarian. Ah, well, that, that'll but, I'll skip. I love the fruit pudding. Oh, I don't know what that is. Oh, yeah, it's like a kind of dumplingy thing. Because my wife's vegetarian. She's always looking for new things. I've, I've never heard of that before. Yep. Uh, I won't bother with the haggis, apes, or tatties, or mints and tatties then, because obviously, uh, although you do get some beautiful... Veggie haggis, really nice veggie haggis. Took the words right out of my mouth there. Get, you get some mm. stunning veggie haggises nowadays. You really do. That. Last but by no means least, this this is the real difficult one. Um, Tonics tea cake or caramel wafer? I'm going to be awkward again. It's got to be a log. Oh. The Tunnock's Caramel Log is a very, very much underrated biscuit. You're, you're, you're right. You're absolutely right. It is. And surprisingly, you know, you, you find coconut in a lot of Scottish things. I don't know how we do that, but you really do. Uh, but no. I, um, go down to... Usually we do lose swimming from London. I mean, at the moment, I'm unable to travel, obviously, so you do it from home. Um, but when I was travelling up and down, the studio crew in London discovered caramel wafers, uh, Tunnock's caramel wafers. And so, you know, now at the airport, you can get the big box of like 24 or 48 yeah. of them. So from time to time, I'd take them down a box of caramel wafers. Um, and I said, but you've got to try the log. They'd never heard of it. So one week I took down the log. So I have got about 30 converts in London. <laughs> caramel log. You're well, right. You're right. The log. <laughs> I don't, I don't, you know what? I don't know why I've never added, really added that one in as well. Because I suppose, truthfully, if I'm being honest, I should add the snowball in there as well, the tonic snowballs. Not if so I'm, fond of the snowball. Uh, it, it's, it def, it's almost like the tea cake without the base, really, and it's yeah. a bit mushy, isn't it? But if I'm being technical, I suppose I should add them all into that. Yes. Kate, this has been absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing your time and chatting to me. It's been a genuine pleasure. Yeah, it's been absolutely lovely. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. That was lovely. Kate is absolutely lovely. As always, I thoroughly enjoyed chatting to Kate. Kate, thank you so much for sharing your time and coming on and chatting with me. It genuinely, genuinely means the world. Hope you enjoyed that today, guys. If you did, please remember, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and leave a comment. But till next time, bye humans. Mm -hmm.